Yeah, watching these videos, right? How the world's just decided to all go stupid about this sort of ransomware stuff. In this case, it's the WannaCrypt, right? Now, ransom now ransomware's been around for well at least the last two years. It's probably be, been a bit more of it, but anyway, um, the best way to avoid this sort of thing. There's two ways. Okay, there's two methods of getting into it, or getting your computer infected by this. One is by you yourself opening up an email using a program such as Outlook, Windows Mail, Windows Live Mail, uh, Thunderbird, or whatnot. The other way is another user on your local network doing the same thing, and you running a version of Windows which is old enough to be affected by the self-replication features of what WannaCrypt and its various features do. Um, there's been a few of these. One of them, some of them masquerade as FBI warnings, some of them masquerade as um, AFP or Australian Federal Police, uh, and a few other types of those. Now, if you want to avoid this stuff, corrupting your shit, the best thing you can do and the cheapest way out of it, and, well, you should be doing it anyway, because if you rely on your computer to have the one sole copy of every single bit of important data that you've ever owned, you're mad. Because the physical hard drives in these machines, or even in this one's case, which is a solid state, if it hits it the end of its life cycle, if I use it too much, it will die. Hard drives fail. They always do. I mean, your mechanical hard drives have a spinning disk and a set of heads that read back and forward that goes, yep, that's where my data is. And somehow they manage to do that perfectly every single time until they decide they don't. And then you turn your computer on and you've got a flashing cursor up here on a black screen that says, no bootable device. At that point in time, your data is gone. If you're relying on one single storage point to have every single piece of important data, which everyone seems to have, when they turn up at the shop I work at, they're like, but all my photos are on there, or all my work stuff's on there, or all my tax stuff's on there. Where are your backups? Seriously. I mean, backup drives, USB, USB hard drives, they're cheap, they're cheerful, you don't need a big one, you only need one at least the same size, if not bigger, than the physical storage drive you have in your machine. And you can buy a one terabyte version of this to cater for, say, a 500 gig hard drive, which is in most laptops, for less than $100 Australian. You have no excuse not to have a backup. External hard drives are cheap. Windows has the tools built into it in this case, I've got two options. I have Backup and Restore, which is the Windows 7 or Windows Vista version. Um, and I also have access to what's called File History, which exists on Windows 8 and Windows 10. Now, WannaCry, which is the one that everyone's talking about at the moment, doesn't affect Windows 10 boxes, because Windows 10 is already secured from this. But... If you aren't running a backup, your data is as good as gone, <laughs> pretty much. Because all it takes, if your data is on this laptop, or a laptop, and it's plugged into a PowerPoint, and someone walks past, walks past, grabs a power cord by accident, and rips it off, and your laptop hits the deck, she's fucked, pretty much. Now, what I'm going to do is guide you through how to set up a backup how to use it, and how to be safe from this sort of stuff that's going on right now. Now, a backup only works if it's your second or third copy of the data that you deem important. If you don't have at least two copies of your data, one on your computer and one on something else, you do not have any of your data. You could turn your computer on tomorrow and it will possibly just die. Now, if you're running Windows 7, Windows Vista, or Windows 8 as an upgrade from Windows 7, or Windows 10 as an upgrade from Windows 7, you can use the standard backup and restore which exists 
under your control panel. The way you do this is you go, well, as I just did, you type back up into your search at the bottom of your start menu if you're on Windows 7 or Vista. Uh, by the way, if you're using Vista or Windows XP, stop using the internet on that computer because it is no, both OS's are no longer supported. They are no longer receiving security updates. That is the end of them. Stop using them. Upgrade to Windows 7, which you can do from Vista with any Windows 7 installation media, if you've got a uh, suitable product key, or um, upgrade through to Windows 7, then through to 10, which is also really good at running on computers that were designed for Windows Vista. Um, but anyway, as we're going, so here I've launched the Windows 7 version of Backup and Restore, which is also the same as Windows Vista. Now from here I'll go, I want to set up a backup. It will go through its little process. It will ask me where do I want to put it. In this case, I've labelled this external as E drive. So we're going to get that to focus. Focus would be really, really good right now. Anyway, so that's that's E drive. So from here I'm going to go I'm going to go next. It'll say what do you want to back up? Here it says let Windows choose, which is okay for most people. But I always like to go let me choose. Then I go next. Then I say I want to have newly stuff, I want to have think tanks libraries, I also want to have the C drive. I also tick the little box at the bottom that says I want a system image. The reason for that is I can use a Windows 7 or Windows 10 CD or USB stick and boot up and say I need to recover this system if I replace the hard drive and it fails and it'll go yep where's your backup I'll go there it is and it goes no dramas I'm going to rebuild it for you. Now it's going to do all this now I can change the schedule it runs it doesn't matter this part of it doesn't matter. Pick a time when your computer might be on. If you want, it reckons Sunday or uh, 7 o'clock. I'll go, yep, okay, cool, cool. No dramas. Save settings and run backup. Now, once I do this, it'll actually commence the backup and start running it. Now, this computer here, I'm not too concerned about because I've got the data that's on here isn't important to me. Um, the data that goes onto here gets put on it and, it, and then... I either upload it to YouTube like I'm doing with this video because this is one of my editing boxes or I just go yep it doesn't matter um, the one that is most important to me is upstairs which has uh, my invoices that I send out to people but that gets sent off to um, OneDrive as my second copy so in that one's case it's backed up anyway the, the stuff that I care about is already backed up otherwise I've got one or two copies in other places but anyway so once this is done you know say you've got the backup done um, I'm actually going to stop it now because I really can't be bothered um, now if I want to rerun that backup the same one I just did what I would do and as you can see, I, I kind of use my computer for a lot of stuff. So I just close out of all this. Now, if I want to rerun a backup for this drive, what I would do is, again, type in backup. And then I'll have the backup and restore option here for Windows 7. I plug this drive in through to USB. Then I click the button that says backup now. It'll run that backup. Once the backup's complete, shut down the computer or use the save to remove option down here, which is under USB for Windows 7, click save to remove. Click the button, wait until you get the notification that says she's good to go, you take the drive out. Do not leave the backup drive connected to your computer. The reason for this is the way these ransomware software works is <clears throat> as soon as if, if someone on your computer even if it's not you if someone on your computer even under another username has an email sent to them and then they open the email that email if it is one of the ransomware things what it does initially I mean Windows tries to help here it says are you sure you want this thing to do whatever it is it's going to do problem is most people will say yeah because 
you know, the boy, will, the boy who cried wolf or whatever. So they'll get the message, blah, blah, blah. Yep, okay, cool, cool. I need you to do this so I can open it to read it. It's probably an email about some bullshit, some sort of PDF file, some sort of invoice or some shit. Anyway, you'll click it to open it. Computer goes, this computer wants to make, uh, this thing wants to make changes to your computer, blah, blah, blah. People click, yep. Anyway, so at that point, you've authorized the program to have admin rights and, little, and full access to your system. The first thing it does once it has that is it deletes your backups, which is why you never, never leave them connected to your computer 24-7. The next thing it does is it runs through your computer and encrypts all your user data, documents, Excel files, Word documents, um, pictures. If it's smart enough, a lot of them do pictures as well. That's JPEGs and all that sort of thing. Then it runs through and grabs your um, data files. Anything start.dat, which is MyOB data. Um, you've got your QuickBooks data. You've got you know pretty much everything that ma that you generally use or make as uh, as an end user, even a, a business or home user. Um, so that's most of your file formats catered for. So what it does is it encrypts it. Then it pops up a message on your screen that says, "Hey, guess what?" I've just encrypted all your data. How would you like a bat? Yeah, sure. Okay, how about paying us in some sort of random currency that is completely untraceable, unverifiable, and the chances of you paying and getting your, uh, the encryption key to restore your data is very slim because there's, they can take your money and they've got no reason whatsoever to give it back. We'll give you back the key. I mean, who's to say that, you know, they're unscrupulous to start with. Who's to say that they're going to give you back the bit that you need to undo all the shit that they just did in the first place to get your money? There's a good chance they won't. So, the way to do it is ensure you've got... If your data is important, which I'm sure a lot of people's are, I mean, mine's kind of quasi-important. I've got music and stuff like that. A lot of it I don't care about because a lot of it's stored offline and I've got more than one copy, so six one half the other, but um, if I need to do a backup, I'd do it onto an external hard drive. I mean, the, as I said, these things are shit cheap. Um, once it's on there, unplug the drive, put it away. The trick is to make sure that if you've done anything important on your computer, plug your drive in, run backup, and click the button that says backup now. Let it run through, shut down your computer or reject the drive as you normally do, then put it away. Put it somewhere that's safe, fire safe, put it in your shed, put it in a Ziploc bag so it's water, waterproof, and then put it in your shed so that if something happens, say your computer shits itself, you get a lightning strike, a tree falls onto your house, or the house burns down, you've got a backup. I mean, seriously, how important is your data and why do you not have two copies? That is the question. The, these these um, wanna crypts and that sort of thing, if, they're having, if, they, if they have enough impact to cause you that much harm that you're willing to pay out that sort of money into an unknown location in a way that you probably won't get your data back anyway, Spend the money initially, fifty to a hundred dollars, even Australian, fifty to a hundred dollars. I mean, this drive here is big enough to store this computer three times over. I don't care. It's big enough, and it's not expensive. I mean, this thing's old, but you know, I've got, I've got a couple of them. If I want to do a backup, I can. I've got the space for it. These are not expensive. You have no excuse not to. Windows has this shit built in. I mean, even Macs have got it built in through Time Machine. Windows 8, Windows 10 have file history, which is exactly the same thing, and they can do the same thing quite easily. You have no excuse.